Time to get rowdy, Roadrunners fans, as we bring you another edition of the Roadrunner Review, the 30-minute magazine show that features Metro State sports and highlights from the past month. I'm Miles Potter, and the man who had nothing to do with Deflategate, my co-anchor, Davey Burke. I thought Payne Manning was news of balls. I swear, but I guess that was a week late, and I was in the wrong city. So anyways, we got a lot to bring you on this show. We got tons of basketball action to bring the audience. And also our men's team welcomed in the conference defensive player of the year, Alex Herrera. And also our women's team traveled down to Golden to take on the always tough Colorado School Mines Ore Diggers. We have a lot of great highlights from those games. And as well, we bring you a one-on-one -on -one interview with Joe McDermott, who is leaving Metro State after 20 year tender. But first, we're going to throw it over to the Jamaican sensation, Lennox Williams, to catch you up on all Metro State news. Thanks, guys. I'm Lennox Williams, and a special congratulations to Joe McDermott for a new job. She'll be missed here at Metro State. Time for some Roadrunner news, and we start off with some academics as two of her own basketball players earned some top notch awards. Mitch McCarron and Danny Jacobs both earned RMAC Academic Players of the Year honors this past January. It is the first time in Armac history that both men's and women's awards were given to the players from the same school. McCurran has won it for the third straight year sporting a 3.8 GPA in human performance and sports. It is the first time Danny Jacobs has won the award after earning a 3.97 in therapeutic recreation. She leads the road runners in points and in rebounds. Nicholas K was named to the first team with McCarran, and Eric Rare was named to the honor roll. Great job in that classroom. And finally, the 2015 Metro State Hall of Fame was announced this past month. Four individuals and one team will be inducted on February 7th. Greg Eisenhart, Gary Romero, the 2006 women's soccer team. Kristen Swison and Todd Schmidt will all be honored. Back to you guys for those high-flying men's basketball highlights. Thanks, Lennox, and a big congratulations to all the Hall of Famers in this year's class. Yeah, it's a prestigious group. It's a prestigious Hall of Fame. Now the Roadrunners for life. All right, let's get you caught up on our nationally ranked men's basketball team. Coach Clark and his squad started off the new year right, hosting back-to-back wins against New Mexico Highlands and Western New Mexico. The 10th ranked Roadrunners went into conference play in my neck of woods in Lakewood. Roadrunners took on Carl Christian, who came in with four conference wins. But those Cougars came in to play in this one. Zach McAmore is double teamed, but finds Andrew Squires, who goes baseline for the layup. Metro responds. Mitch McCarron flies to the rim and finds Bunama Keita, who powers down the slam. Game tied at half. Final moments. Wayne McCullough drains the three ball and ties the game at 59 with 34 seconds left. McCarron splits the fence, takes it hard, and is fouled. The senior, with ice in his veins, makes both free throws and give his squad the 61-59 win. The following night didn't get any easier as they took on number nine ranked Colorado School of Mines in Golden. We're fast forwarding to the second half. Brian Muller connects from long range, but his squad up by eight with nine minutes to go. But when you have Mitch McCarron, you're never out of it. He comes up with the seal, gets the layup, and is fouled. The runners came all the way back to tie the game at 51. Mine's next possession, Trevor Ritchie beats two defenders for the reverse layup and the two-point lead with 49 seconds to go. Nicholas Kate then muscles his way, and he's fouled. The big man is clutch on both free throws, and we're heading into overtime. Final seconds of OT, Ritchie with the rock. He gets double teamed, finds Caleb Waitsman. He fires the jumper, and bang! Metro State comes up short, falling to 7-2 in conference play. The Rutgers were back at home at the Aurora Event Center for the game against the hottest team in the RMAC, Adam State. Kay chases down the Eric pass, finds Eric Rare, and the junior splashes in the three ball. What a great play by Kay. You might see this one later in the show, hint, hint, hint. Grizzlies answer right back. Shakir Smith pops in from the perimeter for three of his 14 first half points. Into the second frame, McCarron flies to the rim, gets the bucket and the foul. McCarron was as cool as the other side of the pillow. Metro is holding a two point lead. Smith comes up the rebound, sprints to the rim, and is easy layup for overtime, but he misses. 
the red and blue hold on for the 84-80 win and snaps the Grizzlies' five-game winning streak. The following night, the Skyhawks came to town and brought their RMAC Player of the Year candidate in Alex Herrera. But it was McCarron who showed the conference who deserves to win that award. Mitch McCarron is double teamed, so what does he do? He goes right around the defense and drops in the mid-range J. The senior had a big night. Herrera using all his beef to get this bucket to fall. He's fouled and goes the line. A relatively quiet night for the 6'10 center, just 17 points and 6 rebounds. But he called McCarron butter because he's on a roll. Scoring a career-high 31 points, Biasi hit 8 of his 14 shots for them from downtown and had 5 assists in 36 minutes of work. This game never lived up to the hype as Metro State clobbered Fort Lewis by 36 points to remain in 3rd place in the RMAC. Oh, I certainly didn't expect it. You know, they're, they're a much better team than the result shows and I think we just came out ready to play and we were right. Now, talk about your night. Career-high night for you, 31 points. What were you seeing out there? Uh, look, my, when my teammates are aggressive and, and their threats, you know, they have to be guarded as well. And I thought I just took the open shots. You know, guys are driving and, you know, Nick's takes up so much more attention. So uh, I just have to shoot the right shots. We came out defensively. I don't know if we could have been better in the first half. To hold a team like that to 16 points, they're getting 85 points, you know, on the season. So I thought our guys just had a great sense of urgency to get stops and, you know, control the game from the onset. Davey, what about Mitch McCarron? Ice in his veins, a career-high 31 points. 28 the night before. He's been unbelievable this year. He's really been stepping up in BJ's absence. Absolutely. Well, what about Kay? You can't forget about the Aussie counterpart. Oh, man, the two Aussies, they're incredible this year. All right, well, it's time to take a break. Not here on the Rotor Review, but we still have plenty to get to. Our women's basketball team has a lot to be excited about after a great start to conference play but the schedule's only getting harder as the season go on for the Red and Blue. Come back and see how they fared against the conference best. We know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. Some students come to Metropolitan State University of Denver to find their future. Others look to sharpen their current skills. In the case of David Thibodeau, it was both. Our faculty helped fuel his entrepreneurial spirit while encouraging him to pursue his personal passions. These two talents came together in Ska Brewing Company, which he co-founded in 1998 in Durango and is considered one of the top up-and-coming Colorado companies. The Roadrunner Review would like to thank its sponsors, Jason's Deli. Real food is fresh, higher quality, more flavorful, less processed, and naturally better tasting. Get real food at any Jason's Deli location. And the Boulder Broker Inn, a proud partner and preferred hotel for Metro State Athletics. So glad you came back with us. Now it's time to get to our women's basketball team who's outperforming their own expectations playing with one senior and eight freshmen. No one thought a roster filled with underclassmen would be so competitive in such a tough conference, but Coach Tanya Jave has done a great job with this unit, and the wins are coming together. Metro State took their winning record on the road to Lakewood, where they took on the Cougars of Colorado Christian. Kate Louthan drives, gets fouled, and makes good on the field goal for the old-fashioned three-point play. Metro answers with their own big, Denny Jacobs. The lone senior finds an opening and cashes in from the paint. She led all scores with 19. CCU actually took a one-point lead into the break. But it was all Metro State in the final 20 minutes. You can't leave Janae Payne open. She's third in the conference in three-point percentage. Keisha Fox with the nifty step move and the easy deuce. Jacobs with the jumper. It's short, but Emily Hardigan rips down the board. Goes right back up, it's fouled, and the shot goes through. Rotors making it look easy, sending CCU to a 14-point lock. Well, we, we just had to get the back to playing hard and focused with some intensity. You know, I think the last week we just were so flat, that last game. So we had to really learn from that game, and I think they're going to have that with our, the team we've got. But fantastic team victory. victory. We talked about being relentless, and, and we really took a big step tonight. So I'm really, really pleased with how we played. Yeah, we just went into this game just 
relentless. We wanted to fight for everything. We were 40 minutes a game, and we wanted to put it on the floor one play at a time, and it just clicked for us tonight, and it was great. Well, uh, tonight, I just my team was really finding me down low. I, I got him on the backside pin, and it was just working out for me tonight. But I think everybody contributed tonight, and it was just our amazing. The guards were just seeing everything, so it was great. It was on to Golden the next night, and the Orders always put up a good fight for our runners. The last two games have been decided by three total points. Jacob's on the baseline. She finds his Georgia order of cutting, and she rewards the freshman who won't miss from there. Another freshman contributing, Aaron McClurry from deep, and she drops in from three-point land. Now Kendra Jessick, who's also a freshman and is putting in good work. Brittany Curl knocking it down from the top of the key. She scored 10 points in the game. Second half, Metro kept their foot on the pedal. Kaylee Graham with two points in the paint. Ten different road runners scored as the game was never in doubt for the road team. Well, I just thought it's total team effort. You know, we really came out and, and we really backed up after a really great effort on Friday night. We are able to come into someone else's gym and really put a total team effort on the floor, offensively, defensively. It was just really great to see. What does it mean for this team to get back-to-back -back wins? Just huge. I mean, for our confidence and for to realize that their hard work is paying off and, and all that. It's, and, and to do it on the road is even bigger because we're getting ready to go on the road for four games after this next weekend. We're at home this weekend, then we've got a tough, tough stretch. Metro State look to make it three wins in a row as they host Adam State at the Rare Event Center. They go inside to Ordorf, who is triple team. That allows Luisa Tago to cut and receive the pass for the layup. How about some more great ball movement? Fox to Payne to Hardigan, who's open for the baseline jumper. Second half, Fox finds Jacob all alone on the opposite end, and she won't miss from there. Jacobs had 10 points and 10 rebounds for the double-double. Hardigan is surrounded, finds Curl open at the wing. Curl says, you ain't gotta go home, but you gotta get the heck out of here as they cruise the 62-47 win to approve to 7-3 in conference play. Oh yes, we've been working really well together. Coach has been really focusing on just coming together and as freshmen, we have a lot of freshmen, but they've really just eloped like we're all just together now, like we're all on the same page and that's just awesome. I mean, I just let it flow. My teammates open up. I mean, if if they don't scout me and they're gonna give me some room, I mean, naturally, I'm just gonna shoot it. And I mean, it's looking good so far. They've been going in so far, so I'm not gonna stop, you know? Yeah, Davey, I mean, women's basketball team's in line for a top spot in that RMAC. Yeah, tournament. yeah, these underclassmen, they're playing so well. Coach Javi's done a phenomenal job. It's great to see them playing so well. All right, well, we gotta take another break. But when we come back, the one, the only, Joe McDermott will join us here at the event center. You don't wanna miss that. Are you a college student that needs a place to live? Are you still living with your parents and want your own space? The Regency Student Housing is perfect for you. The community offers many amenities such as a fitness center, two basketball courts, big screen amphitheater, all you can eat dining hall, bowling alley, arcade, free parking, and a shuttle to and from the Auraria campus. For more information, please call 303-477-1950 or visit our website at regencystudenthousing.com. Metropolitan State University of Denver nurtures student aspiration and empowers lifelong success through personal attention and professional experience in an inclusive environment. Located in the heart of downtown Denver, the university offers broad access to a transformative undergraduate and graduate education on Colorado's most diverse college campus. And as a gateway to opportunity, MSU Denver advances the intellectual, social, cultural, and economic well-being of Denver and beyond. Thanks for coming back on the Road Runner Review. We are now joined by Metro State legend, Joe McDermott. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me today. So now you are leaving under sad circumstances, yes. but what made you decide to leave Metro Denver after 20 years? Well, it's, it's bittersweet. You know, there's two reasons. One, my husband got a job out in California coaching baseball at a Division II university. He started July 1st. It's an area, I'm from San Francisco, and it's an area I've wa we've wanted to get back there for many years. So we took a leap of faith. He took the first job thinking that it probably would be at least a year, maybe two years before an opportunity opened up for me. And then within three months, a job opened and I had to go for it. You know, I'm excited about it, but I'm also very sad to leave here. It is very bittersweet. 
Yeah, now while family is an important decision for you, how important was it too, just the thought of building up a new program from the ground up like you did here at Metro? Well, honestly, at first I wasn't excited. I don't let them hear that, okay? <laughs> I really wasn't. Before I applied, I thought, oh gosh, you know, we've gotten our program to a point where it's really rolling, everything's going great, great people, great culture, and to start over wasn't so great. But as I got into the process, and in particular when I went to campus for my interview, I love the people there, very much like here, very similar mission. So I felt like, okay, I can do this. All right, let's take a trip down memory lane. Okay. You started here as a volleyball coach and a softball coach, correct? Correct, in 1988. What, what made you decide to come to the Mile High City? Okay, so I was at St. Mary's College in California, actually with my husband. We've always kind of moved like that. It's interesting. Um, I was done with my time at St. Mary's for many reasons, and my husband actually had coached here his first year ever coaching under Bill Hellman. And uh, he ran into Bill Hellman, who was the AD baseball coach, and Bill said, we're hiring a new volleyball softball coach, and Dan said, I've got the person for you. So. That's how I got here then. And then I left two years later to go with my husband to Iowa, who got a head baseball coach at an NEI school in Iowa. So I moved without a job, got one within a couple months. We've been very fortunate to be able to both be in college athletics in the same city. And then coming back, it was actually Bill Hellman, again, the AD, called me and said, Joan, volleyball job's going to open up. This was now in 1996. I also at that time was really working towards being an athletic director and he said, Joan, I'm going to retire in a couple of years, come back, be our head volleyball coach, assistant AD, and I'll really train you to be the AD. So that's really how it all happened. Now when you came back to Metro too though, what was it about Metro that made it the right fit for you and your family? You know, it really was not a good fit when I left. I left again because family with my husband getting his first head job. Um, coming back though, Bill really, you know, he just talked to me about it and said things were really moving. By then, Joe Arcise was the vice president here over athletics, and he really had a mission to really take this program to the next level so I could see the groundwork, the framework of where it could really go. So in 98, like you said, you were you came, you came left and then you came back. In 96, in 96 yeah, yeah, it's confusing. <laughs> what made you decide to hang up the clipboard when you finally became AD and trade in for the business suit? Well, you know, it's something I always wanted to do. You know, when I got out of uh, getting my master's at Stanford, that's why I went there. It was what I always wanted to do, but it just took me a long time to get there. And I became a coach first and got, you know, got in the coaching mode, fell in love with it. And then finally here was this opportunity here at Metro State and with Bill Hellman, with his support and Joe Arcise, the VP, it was absolutely the right time. Well, we're just getting started here with Joe McDermott, and when we come back, we're going to touch on that basketball team who brought Metro their first national championship game. We'll be right back. Getting down to crunch time here on the Road to Interview, and we still have plenty to get through. Basketball, baseball, softball, everything's coming up. Softball in the RMAC championship. Uh, Aubrey Mall uh, had a great performance. We got to get someone else in here. He's going to have ice in his veins to get through this highlight. BJ, you're in. Yeah, I mean, softballs have an amazing year so far. I mean, they have Aubrey Mall as a starting pitcher. I mean, they have Clutch. Clutch. I mean, they got a lot of great hitters. I mean, so I think they're going to make a great run this year. I love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. Welcome back. We're still joined by Joe McDermott, who's taking the job at Cal State East Bay to be the new athletic director in March. So, Joe, in 2000, Metro State was on the top of the mountain in Absolutely. men's basketball. What was that like for you, bringing oh. that first national championship here? Oh my gosh, it's an experience I will never ever forget. You know. They're like once in a lifetime situations. And it's amazing because it happened so quickly. You know, in 99, they got to the national championship game. That was my first spring as athletic director. Nobody expected us to get that far. Um, and so that was a great experience. And that really led into 2000. And those kids to be around them and to be around that coaching staff, 
and it, you see how they are today. It's the same thing. Derek Clark, who's now our head men's basketball coach, you know, was an assistant then. And um, same kind of focus and same kind of intensity. And it's that team, again, focus and playing strong defense and really getting after it. And it was just really exciting. And all the administrators that came from our president all the way down. And it was unbelievable. One of those once in a lifetime situations. And that, it didn't end there for men's basketball. They got another national championship. The women's soccer, they got two. Right. Anthony right. Luna, two individual. What was it about bringing Metro, just bringing it to the forefront of college athletics? You know, this school is really a special place, and this athletic department is even more special. And to so get us out on that forefront and get national exposure to be able to talk about this institution that I'm so proud of, and I know we all are, it was huge. You know, so besides just winning competitively, just to get our name out there, it's funny. Now you go around the country and I get up in a room to speak. I don't have to say Denver. I just say Metro State. I'll be in a room of all NCA people. They know who we are. They know where we are. And so that's really good because it's great to be able to tell the story about this institution. Now championships are always nice, you yes. know. But it's really about athletics here at Metro State. Absolutely. You rose the graduation rate to 69% when you're from right. tender here at Metro State. Why were athletics so important to you? as an athletic director? So, you know, they're here, the reality is they're here as students first. You know, that's what we want. We want them to get that degree. We want them to have a great experience athletically while they're here, you know, and do well. So, but that's the important piece. So we really wanted to grow that. I think we built a good support. It's about our coaches bringing in the right kind of student athletes and for them building the culture and saying, look, you're students first, you'll go to class, you're going to study. And we've really developed that. It's, you know, we want that to grow. If I it's going to continue to grow because I do believe the pieces are in place. I think they can get up into the 70 percent. Um, so that's really what we're here for. To, and then, you know, when they have the great experience, they graduate, they come back, and they support the institution. We have a lot of com alums come out to games, and that's really fun to have that as well. Yeah, while the graduation rate is high, we're winning national championships. One thing Metro's never had is a scandal, and that sometimes makes headlines. But <laughs> what is it about the character here at Metro? And I'm sure you take, I'm sure that you hold that in high regard, the great character Metro has. Absolutely. You know, one of the things, because we are a small department, we don't have football. We don't have those big roster sports, wrestling. So we can be more like a family. I do know most of our student athletes' names. We, you know, and I can kind of be mom at the same time. And so with the coaches, you know, we really instill. It's students first, experience first, and bringing in kids with good character that have discipline. And that's how you do well. You know, it's one thing to have a student athlete who has a lot of talent, but if they don't have the discipline, if they don't have the right character, you know, you're not going to get what you really need. So it is about bringing in the right kids. You know, they talk about having the right people on the bus to have success. It really is what it's all about. We gotta take another break, but when we come back, Joan will join us for one more segment. And as always, we have the top plays of January. You don't want to miss that. And the celebration is on for Mike Dunlap. The Skyhawks celebrate a second national title in program history. And the winner of the 2006 Harlan Hill Trophy as Division II College Football Player of the Year is Danny Woodhead from Shadron State. ASU, ASU, ASU. We Welcome back. We're still joined by Joan McDermott, the athletic director here at Metro State, but not for very long because on April 1st, she's going to take the new AD at Cal State East Bay. Joan, how nervous are you to start that new program? Oh my, I am nervous, I have to tell you honestly. But, you know, I was talking to the staff the other day, it's, it's about courage. Leadership really is about courage. You know, being able to speak up and do the right things and say the right things and just be that strong leader. Um, I'm really hoping to have another great little over two months during my time here before I go on and take off there. Well, what are you going to miss most about here in Metro State? Oh gosh, that's part of it, student athletes. I'll miss student athletes, I'll miss students that work, you know, for us like you guys, um, coaches, staff people around campus, I'm going to miss it all, I have to tell you. I really will. It's such a great place. It's so special and um, just really fortunate to have this time here 
you know, and I feel like I'm more alum here than where I actually went to school. So I know I'll be coming back. All right, so Joan, you have so many great memories here on the Auraria campus. Who would you like to thank the most, though, here with the Roadrunners? You know, I, I think I would like to thank Dr. Stephen Jordan. Uh, you know, he, I've been working with him now for 10 years. He really challenged me when he first took over as president and really taught me so much more in terms of being an athletic director and a le uh, leader in, you know, leading this program. So I really want to thank him. I've learned so much from him, and he's just so great in everything he's done here in this campus. So he really stands out the most. Well, Joan, we want to thank you so much for your time here at Metro State, and thank you from the coaches, us, the staff, everybody. And without you, I mean, we don't know what this show would be around. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Time for the top plays of the month of January. And as always, they're brought to you by the Regency. Play number five comes from the women's hoops versus Western New Mexico. The freshman phenom, Georgia Ordorf, comes up with a steal, speeds her way to the rack where she finishes with the layup. This Aussie has been incredible here on her first season for the red and blue. Over to men's hoops and Metro found themselves in a battle with Colorado Christian on the road. Mitch McCarran looking for the spark and finds it in freshman Bunami Keita and booyah! McCarron draws the defense over and leaving the 6'10 center all alone for the slam. Big two points as Metro wins by two points. Mitch McCarron can pass, but Mitch McCarron can also score. In one of the biggest games of the year, the senior drops in a career-high 31 points in the 36-point win over Fort Lewis. Whether he was connected from long range or dribbling circles around the defense, Mitch McCarron made eight of his 14 field goals, including 11 of 12 at the line. 17 seconds left, McCarron for three. I see you, Mitch McCarron. That one falls from deep. Cheers, world kid. The rest of us are just paying rent. Nicholas K rounds out the top two plays. First against Adam State. Porter almost throws the pass out of bounds, but K saves it in the nick of time and finds Eric Rayer open in the corner where he splashes home the three ball for the early lead. Let's turn up Eric Lansing on the call. Uh, after that timeout, they're making a much more better effort. And K, great feed to Rayer. Rayer from the corner for three, and that is all Nick K on the hustle. And the top play of the month of January comes from Nick K, who receives the pass on the baseline, fakes everyone out of their sneakers, and makes them pay on the dunk. K acts like he's going away from the paint. Both defenders follow and powers down the slam. Kind of reminds me of. And then the deception. No, I'm not going away from the hoop. And who's at the end waiting but Patrick Ewing? K and Jordan, the same sentence? You gotta love that. Those were the top players of the month. And as always, they're brought to you by the Regency. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Rotor Review. But remember, check out GoMetroState.com for all your Metro State highlights. But for Lennox Williams, Miles Potter, Eric Lansing, Kermit Ball, of course Joe McDermott, who we miss so much. I'm Davey Burke, and we'll see you next month for High Flying Metro State Action. We'll see you next time.